Agent Smith, who's really a computer program, says, I'd like to share a revelation I've had during my time here, meaning my time like in the matrix dealing with humans. It came to me when I tried to classify your species. I realized that you're not actually mammals. Every mammal on this planet instinctively develops a natural equilibrium with their surrounding environment, but you humans do not. You move to another area. You multiply and you multiply until every natural resource is consumed. The only way you can survive is to spread to another area. <laughs> yeah, it causes a virus. Yeah, there is another organism on this planet that follows the same pattern do you know what that is a virus human beings are a disease a cancer on this planet you are a plague and we are the cure and i think a lot of people today like that's their anthropology that is their understanding yep. of human nature they see humans and the church and and the church as a plague on this planet yeah and they're like well i'm not gonna have kids there's too many people everywhere overpopulation yep. and this that and the you other look at thing. the crusades uh, you know all that kind of stuff over the course of the centuries the church mm. has been around a long time right okay. like like religion is a virus re religion is yeah okay. yeah so i like you know agent smith it again this just struck me now as you were reading the, that part of the script like mm -hmm. literally that's representative of a lot of people who with good intentions yeah it, nobody's like ha -ha, religion is evil because i'm evil so I'm gonna, like no, no, nobody's evil intrinsically. Again, like going back to yeah. like the Catholic view of the human person, like people are good and they're trying their best. Yeah. Um, and so in trying their best, a lot of people come to the conclusion when they look at some of what's happened historically, when they look at like, like what Agent Smith described, a lot of people see not only humanity, but also specifically the church. Like the ch there have been church leadership and, and people representing the church whether formally or informally, who have done some stuff that's like, you're a virus. <laughs> yeah. You're you're making things worse, not better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, like specifically, it makes me think of the difference between like how a lot of people see our relationship to the environment and people talk about like global warming and, yeah. and, 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 you know, climate change and all those sorts of things. And there are a lot of awful things that we're doing to the planet. Um, and the Christian perspective, which I, I think Pope Francis very beautifully described in his encyclical Laudato Si, in the differences, the, the Catholic and Pope Francis, and, and I think the authentically Christian biblical way to see is that at the center, the solution to the problem is humans as made in the image and likeness of God given dominion and as stewards of creation, right? Yeah. Like we are the, we are the reason creation exists. Right. And so it always has to put the, the human person first. Yes. And so it's a very pro-life approach to quote unquote environmentalism, right? It's not environmentalism for the environment's sake. It's right. environmentalism for the sake of this beautiful world that God has created and placed us in stewardship of. And so um, if you've never read Laudato Si, I, I highly encourage you to like, cause the, the Pope Francis has such a beautiful vision yeah. for connecting what it means to be pro-life, not just anti-abortion pro-life, but pro-life in a way that encompasses so many issues, including the environment that God has made us in his image to reflect to the world our, like his love for us and his love for the world. In the gospel in Mark at the end, it says that you should go into the world and preach the gospel, not to all people, but to all creation. Mm -hmm. Preach the gospel to all creation. Like we are supposed to be treating the world as God would treat the world. Yeah. And so I, I, humans are not the problem. Humans are the solution yeah. and humans are, are, are really the, the reason for creation. And so yeah. I, I think that that's such a key perspective change. And sometimes yeah. we may act like a virus, but we're also the cure. Right. right. Like it's not the cure to uh, eradicate humans or limit humans or try to like the machines kind of try to, to manage humans. They create this prophecy about the one, you know, and, and try to and then they, they uh, uh, you know, they destroy Zion like five times or something yeah. like that. And then re, re rebirth it and give them this false narrative that there's this one that's going to come save them um, as res this is revealed at the end of the second one by the architect. Right. Yeah. Um, so. uh and, and that's how a lot of people see it is humans just have to be managed, yeah. right? Whereas Pope Francis sees it as no humans are the, the we're, we're the solution. We are the stewards of this creation. So, yeah, I totally agree. I, I think that um, we have to contextualize properly. Like what is the earth here for? What is the universe here for? Like we have been given a role as, as the, 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 the prime uh, entities on the planet. Like, yeah. like we do have a role of stewardship but it's not because like the planet matters more than we do. Yeah. 
it's not like we're the guardians of 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 some treasure for some other thing like yeah we're we're meant to to protect it and care for it like i you know i like to think about uh adam and eve like if adam and eve pre-fall pre-suckage yeah um <laughs> pre-suckage yeah uh, i think a, i think that's that's it's that's a theological term that's the latin that comes from aquinas yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, pre-suckage um Pre-suckage, Adam and Eve, you know, they're 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 in charge of stuff. They're they're caring for for the world. They're caring for the garden. Uh, they're naming animals and crap. And and uh, you know, if they were to see the way that things happen with with the world in our hands, mm -hmm. how would they react to it? You know, like mm -hmm. I, I think that's an interesting kind of perspective to to bring to the table. Um, and yeah. I, I think that it's it's convicting too, like if we're really willing to ask that question. But one of the challenges we face with when it comes to like preservation of the planet and and just all of this is like it's become so politicized. Yeah, I know. And so like you have to imagine a world that hasn't been artificially put into this weird bipartisan dynamic where yeah. like if you're on the right, you gotta think this way. Mm -hmm. And if you're on the left, you gotta think this way. Yeah. Like what if what if we were just like free of that yeah uh -huh. and we were just responsible people <laughs> that cared for the crap that's in front of us mm -hmm. and did the best we could instead of like having to cling to the ideologies that you know adhere to the proper side of the spectrum that we're on politically yeah like and, and i think that's you know that's a proper understanding of identity right? yeah rather than seeing ourselves as first as conservative or Democrat or liberal rather than seeing that as our primary identity and the other half of the country as a them, right. right? Seeing our primary identity as a child of God and letting the church and the truths and the doctrines of, of the church shape our thinking and shape our identity more than whatever CNN is saying or Fox news is saying, or my yeah. neighbors are saying, right. And so then like, I care deeply about the environment and like, right. I'm like, we, we signed, like we switched our energy plan to like something. It all comes from like geothermal and wind and all that stuff. So like all the, and it costs a little bit more, but I'm willing to make that sacrifice because I care about the planet. But mm -hmm. like, I'm also super pro-life in the sense that I'm like anti-abortion and like those two, like social justice and pro-life, like for Catholics, that's the same thing, yeah. right? It's not one or the other. And so like I can be anti-racist and I can be pro-life, mm -hmm. right? And I avoid some of the some of the, the the pitfalls of the secular versions of those things yeah. right like the secular version of anti-racism or the secular version of pro-lifeism um is it, like they, they fall into some traps and and i feel like the authentic like catholic social teaching is so beautiful yeah and it, it really gives is. it gives us a way to see the world and a lens to see the world that's not just this uh, this false american political polarity so and i think that's a lot yeah. of what the matrix is about is like there's a false narrative that surrounds you it's everywhere around you you can smell it you can taste it you can see it you can hear it and it's everywhere it permeates our existence but as soon as you're willing to release that false narrative mm -hmm. you see the world in a totally new way yeah and that i think is you know one of the best takeaways to have from the matrix yeah absolutely mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and, and the false narrative relative to what we were just talking about would be like that bipartisan you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I take my time, flex like whoa. I take my time, just let's go. I take my time, flex like whoa, tell them by do. I take my time, flex like whoa. I take my time, just let's go. I take my time, flex like whoa, tell them by do. It's like it's dope.